In this video, we're going to talk about active transport. And this is the transport that moves molecules across the cell or plasma membrane uh, in which energy is used. And so energy is required for this to happen. Um, unlike passive transport, which doesn't require energy, any energy, active transport does. And so really what this is, is it's the movement of molecules. We're moving molecules across the cell membrane from an area of low concentration to an area of high concentration. If this is our, our membrane here. We're moving molecules from an area of low concentration where there's very few of them to an area where there's a lot of them, and that's high concentration. Opposite of that is in passive transport, or where we would move from an area of high concentration to low concentration. And so what we see happening here is we're moving against the concentration gradient. In our example here, we've got uh, some water molecules, little, little dots, and we have some solute. Uh, this could be salt, it could be sugar, it's anything that the water is dissolving. So these are our solute molecules. On uh, the other side of the, the membrane, we've got lots of solute molecules, uh, as well as quite a few water mo molecules. In this situation, we have a high concentration of water molecules to solute molecules. So there's a lot of water molecules on this side to the amount of solute molecules. On the opposite side, we've got a lot of solute molecules. Um, and, and although we have a lot of water molecules, the concentration is less. And so there's less water molecules here compared to the solute molecules. On the opposite side, we have a lot of water molecules to these solute molecules. And so what we're going to see happen is um, uh, in, in active transport, we're moving against the concentration gradient. So if we're moving these solute particles to this side, we're moving against the concentration gradient. We're moving against the low concentration uh, of water on this side to the high concentration of water on this side. So our solute particles are moving. Um, and a great example of this is, um, is something called the sodium-potassium pump. Uh, during this example, or, or in active transport, uh, we're using protein pumps to move things across the membrane. Uh, think about, for example, if you were to try to move water from one container to another and you couldn't pour uh, the liquid or the water to those different containers. You'd need some sort of pump to make this happen. And a protein pump, uh, proteins that are actually pumping these molecules across the membrane, uh, is what helps the cells to do this in the cell membrane. They actually require energy. Just like a pump you'd have to plug in to provide energy, you have to do the same thing with these protein pumps in the cell membrane. Uh, you have to provide them energy. And that form of energy is ATP. Um, again, so a good example of this is the sodium potassium pump. And what happens in this situation is we're moving sodium ions against the concentration gradient. So let's take a look at what that, that looks like. Um, here is our intercellular space. So this is inside the cell. And here is extracellular space, so this is outside of the cell. These molecules are showing us the different steps in this process, and these are representing protein pumps right here. The orange is our sodium ions, and the yellow is our potassium ions. So the yellows are our potassium right here. Uh, here we've got an ATP molecule, um, which will eventually become ADP. We'll talk about that. And so what we see happening here is our sodium ions right here are being pumped against the concentration gradient. So they're at an area where there's a low concentration of them and they're being forced to an area of high concentration outside of the cell. Those sodium ions are released outside of the cell and that protein pump then accepts potassium ions. And so by pumping the sodium ions across the cell membrane, uh, that, that pump is forced to allow potassium ions to actually move inside of the cell. And so we see two potassium ions move inside the cell. And actually, there's three sodium ions moved out of the cell for every two potassium ions that are moved inside the cell. So we've got a high concentration of sodium outside of the cell and a high concentration of potassium inside the cell. And the reason cells do this, uh, the potassium helps to maintain um, cell volume. Uh, potassium is sometimes used in different cells for different uh, pathways. Um, in some cells, uh, like nerve cells, for example, that potassium is used to help transfer signals, and so that potassium is used by cells for a variety of different functions. The ATP molecule, this energy molecule, is what's powering all of this. It's providing the energy to make this happen. And what happens is this phosphorus actually comes off of the ATP molecule, and so we get a molecule called ADP, and that stands for adenine triphosphate. And this, this uh, phosphate um, is providing the power or the energy to make all of this process happen. 
I'm going to link this video. Uh, this is a good video that demonstrates active transport, and I'll link this so that you can watch this after you're done watching our notes video. The other two types of transport, active transport, that we're going to talk about are endocytosis and exocytosis. And endocytosis, endo, we're bringing in. And so in this example, we're bringing large molecules or liquids into the cell. That's called endocytosis. And how this works, uh, a pocket of material is surrounded by the cell membrane, and it's actually brought inside of the cell. Um, phagocytosis is a type of endocytosis that's particular or specific to bringing particles into the cell. So endocytosis is the, the larger phrase to explain this. Uh, phagocytosis is exactly, uh, it's pertaining exactly to bringing particles into the cell. Um, here's a nice image that describes or shows us the process for this. We're bringing large molecules or liquids into the cell. Here is our cell. This is the, the cream color. Here is our cytoplasm. This is outside of the cell. You can see there's lots of different stuff out here, different molecules. And so this food particle or other molecule wants to be brought into the cell. And to do that, the cell membrane kind of surrounds it. And then that, that surrounding portion pinches off into a vesicle. And that vesicle is eventually going to be transferred to the Golgi apparatus or maybe the endoplasmic reticulum. Um, same thing uh, here. We're looking at more specific molecules. Those molecules get surrounded by the cell membrane, pinches off into form a vesicle. And same thing in this example as well. Exocytosis is exactly the opposite of endocytosis. And rather than bringing something into the cell, we're releasing or, or excreting something from the cell. So uh, this process releases molecules or particles from the cell by fusing a vesicle membrane with the cell's membrane. And what makes this possible is that the cell uh, membrane and the vesicle membrane are made of the same things, phospholipids. So here's a nice example, an image of, of this process. At our Golgi apparatus, two vesicles are formed. These are just two different examples. Uh, the white portion is inside of the cell. The gray is outside of the cell. In this case, this vesicle uh, is, is released or excreted from the Golgi apparatus. It travels to the cell membrane. That vesicle fuses or combines with the cell membrane, and then it opens up to release the contents of that vesicle out of the cell. This example, it's the same process, but there's a specific uh, signal. Um, so there's some sort of signal received from outside of the cell, and that signal is telling the cell, our cell in this example, to release this, um, whatever this may be. And so this would be a good example of a protein receptor or chemical recognizer um, receiving a signal and, and directing the cell to do something based off of this. And in this case, it's going to release something from that cell. Those are our two examples, uh, uh, specific examples for active transport, um, and then the sodium potassium um, as well, uh, example of active transport. The thing to remember with active transport is we're moving from high, excuse me, from low to high concentration, and ATP is required. Or with endo and exocytosis, we're moving something into or out of the cell.